Good morning. Uh, I'm Michael Sampson. I'm working at Wayne State University, and I will try to present a tool. It's called an Internet Agent. Uh, this is designed to capture complete or partial web pages, including PDF files, database pages, email, in uh, several browsers. Uh, by default, I'm using Internet Explorer, and right now, you are looking at the player version of the software that is coming free. It's uh, similar to Adobe Acrobat Reader, so uh, you can view uh, all the files captured uh, in this database using the free download player over the web. Uh, Catch the Web has two versions. One is solo. It's a client. They also ha offer uh, an enterprise version. Um, that it's uh, a little bit more ex expensive, but it's a web-based uh, database. And uh, uh, since April, um, they offer a wonderful feature. It's called uh, publishing that will create MHT type of files. These are the archival files that Internet Explorer is creating when you save uh, web pages. So pretty much right now, you can exchange, collaborate, and let everybody that is using Internet Explorer view files creating using this uh, program uh, without having the player or without uh, having to install absolutely anything. Um, as you see, I, uh, I just created a folder for the Kali, and I downloaded all the pages uh, that I wanted to uh, look at while I was coming here. So I have this information, and uh, really, I don't have to use the internet to, to download or to really have an internet connection to be able to look at all these uh, capture files. Uh, I'm going to just go very quickly over the uh, solo, that the client software features, and after that, I'm going to uh, be hands-on in showing how to use this tool. So, as I said, this uh, application will let you capture complete uh, or partial web pages, including PDF, flash, email, or, or absolutely anything that will display in uh, Internet Explorer or several other browsers are supported by this software. It will also allow to add yellow highlights and sticky notes to web pages. You do this before capturing the pages. You, in the database, you can search the document content, and you can also search user added notes. These are the notes that you create at the time of capture. And everything in the HTML and the notes field is indexed uh, in the database. And uh, with this tool, you can also share part of your collection by publishing. But I said it's a wonderful uh, feature. And you can also present this uh, collection online or offline, and I think this is the whole idea behind this presentation. I'm wondering here how many people really do any type of web presentations, class introductions or anything. Um, how many of you have ever used an Internet agent? Do you know what an Internet agent is? This is an Internet agent. <laughs> and <laughs> if you would like to find some other Internet agents, uh, I would suggest use any of the search engines, Google or so, and just type in Internet uh, Agent, and you'll get more products. This product, I, I became so very familiar because it was free for me. I attended uh, a demonstration in the exhibits last year at the American Association of Law Libraries. I got in love with this product, and I'm going to tell you that I'll show you databases that I created on my huge file. I download absolutely everything that I see that is personal, work-related, or anything else. Um, I organize, I used to be a cataloger, so I am pretty good in creating folders and subfolders. And I'm going to share with you, I have legal resources, I have even jokes for lawyers here, a book, uh, a great uh, folder, and uh, even uh, a map quest. Whenever I have to go to any place, instead of doing it every time, I just download the page. So every time I, I have to go to the same place, meetings or so, I just recall the file. Uh, I'm going to stop this uh, uh, player mode. And maybe before I will uh, uh, quit this application, I was supposed to do this at the end of the show. I'll show you how easy it is to uh, customize this player. So. Another way to use uh, this uh, uh, capturing of uh, web documents, maybe if you have any idea of creating kiosk, 
uh, modules in your, I'm a librarian, in a library or so. If you have uh, web pages with information that uh, you change quite often, it takes literally minutes to create uh, a show using this application and you run, you run it like here, you can run it in uh, theater mode that I didn't even show you. And here, this is all, all you have to do here, you show where you start. If you want to show folder contents, you can do this and you check mark this. Box. You can also, if you have a live internet connection, you can launch the bookmarks and you go live on the internet. So you can set this presentation, this theater mode, to any old PC, and all you need is just a hard drive and a simple monitor. You don't need any internet and power. So you can run web, web applications and information, so in a cache mode. Here you set up the autoplay mode, five, two, whatever you want in seconds. And you autoplay. So it's going to go, and on the left-hand side, it's showing you the pages that it's going through. And if you want in full mode presentation, this is full screen. Is that much? I'm going to escape it. Good. I'm going to stop the player. Pretty much this is all I would say about the player. And in fact, I started in uh, backwards with this application. Now, I'm going to use, in fact, their online help, and I'm going to go over some of the features, and I'm going to try to, to demo. Uh, if I wanted just to say, this is showing right now the database that I've been creating mostly since uh, October last year when I started to use it every day. I'm using this tool, and I'm also using another uh, application, an Internet agent that is called PowerMarks. I use these two tools. The other one I learned last year at uh, Kali about PowerMarks. Uh, this software is available now. I don't know if, if they offer yet an educational price. It's about $99, the Catch the Web. The other one, PowerMarks, is about uh, $17 educational price. For that one, you need an Internet uh, uh, connection. And between the two, whenever I get on any website that I like, I download in Catch the Web solo, and I uh, organize it, and I go into uh, PowerMarks and Bookmark it too. And between the two, I have the best tools to really index uh, the Internet sites that I am uh, interested in. Do you have a question? Yeah. For this program, okay, you purchase it, you download it on your computer, and you create your shows or your folders or whatever. But if you have to give a presentation somewhere else, you obviously need the reader as well as your data file. Right? No. That's what I said. And I will go over these features. Since you have the publishing feature, and as not only is that you can present, you can give it to absolutely anybody. I have a CD-ROM right now here. I burned it before I left. I have all these databases on the left-hand side. I can give you, I, can, I will show you how to do it. I will export it. All you need is a browser, an Internet Explorer. Once you have the Internet Explorer, you open that file that it's an MHT file the extension, and pretty much you have. You will not be able to add add the highlights, to do add notes or so, but pretty much you'll be able to run it. If you want to download the players that it's free on the web, you can use the same type of files, but you have to use the archival format that is proprietary to this application, and you are able to do all this, but create and add to the database. You have only read uh, permissions. You don't have any write. So uh, you can run this application on all Windows. It's only a PC, uh, Windows uh, environment application, no Mac version. I try to use the MHT uh, files on a Macintosh using Internet Explorer. They did not work. And I suggested to the company to make it uh, possible for uh, Macintosh uh, people. Uh, you need at least 64 megabytes of RAM. Uh, you need. I'm, I'm going to address only Internet Explorer. I'm not going to address Opera on, or any of the other browsers that are supported. Uh, you need Internet Explorer version 5 or higher, and if you really want to add notes, that is a very powerful tool, uh, you need 5.5. Uh, I always try to keep my uh, work environment updated to the latest in uh, the Windows environment and in the Internet Explorer. So, and here, too, we have uh, version 6 of Internet Explorer. 
Now I'll, I'll show you step by step how you capture web pages, how you add highlights, how you add notes, how you create and export files, how you do any of these features. If you have questions, please ask me as I'm presenting them. I wanted just to show a little bit on the left hand side. These are folders where whenever I find in something that I want to share with my colleagues and uh, use email to send these files, that's where I grab and send this to email. And if you look here, I have, I'm doing also government documents for my department. So I am grabbing all the administrative notes and the uh, technical supplements as they come. And all I have to do afterwards, and I put them on our intranet that I created, all I have to do is highlight the new electronic resources because that's what I'm particularly interested in uh, grabbing from these files. I highlight them, anything that is of importance for uh, me and for my director to make a decision about retention or not. And after that, I save it in MHT format, email. Uh, to all my colleagues that do reference and so they know what's new or what is coming and I do this for absolutely anything that I consider it's, is of uh, uh, any interest for uh, the areas that I cover. Um, as I'm showing, so I created a, uh, a folder here for to mail and here I grabbed all the new, uh, latest uh, news on uh, uh, instructional technology uh, news that uh, are uh, in my area of uh, interest. So that's about that much what I have about uh, mailing. In uh, reading, these are the areas where I capture web uh, pages. I am a little bit behind doing some of this reading. And as you see here, I have a lot of uh, pages to, uh, to read and to, uh, to study. But every day as I go through my email and do my reading, I capture for uh, later reading. And I have IT, and I'm a... Uh, uh, lately, because of uh, the new Kali person uh, doing the website, I uh, started to look into aggregators, and this is something uh, very nice, and I would like to, to do a presentation maybe next year, because I think, uh, are you aware of the aggregators in the field? Wonderful ways of grabbing information and coming to you automatically. And uh, they are called also RSS feeds. They st stand for Rich Site summary, I believe. So this is an area where I, I grab everything that uh, I uh, learned from uh, Kali, and uh, I started to use this on Petadesk. It's a free application. Uh, I would suggest if you really uh, will be interested in this area that I think is going to become mainstream to go and look what you can do. You can create a web pages and collect information uh, for your areas of interest. It's coming automatically to you. Uh, it's like a syndicated uh, newsletter that you can create. So that's about uh, areas of reading. I have here uh, even mail. I would like to show I grab mail from... Uh, this is uh, an Outlook email that I received. It was of importance for me because it, it uh, gave me some information about things that I had to do for the website for the Michigan Association of Law Libraries and just forget this password or so. So I grabbed it. So it's permanent here. Instead of printing or so, I just grabbed it. I know where to go. I put it in the category of information for ALL. And it's always there for me to, to know when I have to uh, update pages or so. The information is there. So pretty much here it was about the username, the password, to really be able to change. Um, so I categorize here, I have everything that is related to me for uh, listservs and the uh, website on ALL. Uh, I started uh, to create here my website on Kali on the new, uh, are you aware? How many of you have started to use these tools on the Kali website? You can create your web. Elmer, just, it's on Technoid. So I started to create these uh, uh, pages. This is hosted by uh, Kali. And uh, if you would be interested, I would suggest you go and read about it, and you can post uh, your website. I have here the Catch the Web Todays. I looked a lot at, at Endeavor uh, lately, and I kept, and I, uh, uh, these are examples of, this is a PDF file that I captured. So I read a lot about Endeavor. 
uh, government documents. Everything that I, I want to learn about government documents, I bookmark and bring it here. This is one of my areas of work. Uh, I'm also showing you how you navigate, and I'm going to show you. Uh, it's a tree-based, and what is really wonderful about this tool is the fact that I'm using uh, this uh, tree directory in Internet Explorer as if I'm in uh, the Explorer Windows environment, if you see how I'm navigating here. And I'm doing it without using the solo. I am in uh, Internet Explorer. Uh, what else I have here? I have all the FDLP desktop where I have all the tools if I need or go anywhere where I need to read about uh, or, or to contact anybody. I have them in the databases here. So pretty much I grabbed all the pages. So in case I don't have an internet connection, I'm able to read it. And what's, what's really beautiful, if you go to and um, you have any class presentation and uh, uh, you expect to have problems, slow network, or maybe uh, servers down or so, I would suggest grab your pages, go to your class with no worry, and if you have to download three or four levels down, download all those pages. At the same time, if you really want to go deeper and you really want to show Internet sites, you click on any uh, link or anything that is on the Capture Web page, and if, you, if the Internet is present, you get there. So you have the peace of mind of knowing that you capture what you want to present, and also if you have the Internet is present, you can go further and investigate and show to students. But this is a wonderful, wonderful uh, tool. It captures absolutely everything, uh, rollovers, any dynamic effects, everything. And I'll show you when you save a page. What the tricky part is when you download all the elements, including in the web page, you might download some server type of uh, code or uh, I don't know how to call them, those little things that do on call databases or special features that will give you error messages when you use this application. It's coming there because it's trying to emulate the Internet activity. So if it's a connection to a database, it will pop up and say it's an error here. That's what happens when you capture everything in the web page, and I'll show you uh, what it's all about. But otherwise, it's uh, wonderful. So uh, I, I disable that option in uh, downloading and also in uh, the player. Um, absolutely everything that is related to my area of work, I bookmark. Um, and here, I'm building this huge huge uh, area of legal resources, and I grab and from LLRX everything that I am uh, learning, uh, I am grabbing here, and also uh, funny, serious, not serious, I grab everything. This is just the cartoons and jokes as I am going and I am discovering. Um, I have under Lexis and Westlaw, uh, because I have this uh, as my assignments, I, uh, I grabbed the mock site that I created for uh, myself and the control panel to uh, learn more about it. For our uh, law school, I have here is all the wraps that I bookmark. And what I'm doing, I'm capturing and exporting this uh, uh, page in MHT format, and I put it on our intranet. So, in fact, they will always, my colleagues, look at what's the latest. At Lexis, I go every semester and update this page. And when they want to go farther, and if they want to link or to, cre to see anything else, as I said, they can just go here, click on any element if they have internet, and they will get there. So they really have the real life uh, files in a more usable uh, format without having them to know where to go and how deep to go on Lexis to get it. So it's a, a, a nice and easy way to point it. So I, and I do the same for uh, West. If any of you are uh, in uh, the password manage, see this is some of the stuff that is coming because it's looking in the page at uh, uh, the code. And now I can display it. So I have the codes and everything that is in the Westlaw here. And before I left. 
uh, I created, uh, I burned this database. And you are looking right now on, let's, let's, this is the CD-ROM, and these are the files. And I created MHT uh, archival format, and I'll show you. Suppose I'm a, a colleague, and I get these files. Uh, all I have to do is double-click and open. It's loading the file. It's pretty big. And now, wow, it's that MHT file, including all my links. This is read-only, and you don't need any player, you don't need anything, you just need the file in that format, and you get it. If I click here, and I'm on the web, I'm on the website of that uh, uh, association or what I'm looking at. So this is I'm showing you right now. It's that file that I burned on the CD-ROM. I opened it with Internet Explorer, and uh, you have it. So that's a way to, to share files with colleagues or to create bookmarks. Also, you can present this. You can put this on a website. You can, oh, there are so many uh, ways that you can use uh, these files in for web, for updating, for areas of uh, uh, um, responsibilities. And uh, I would say it's a wonderful tool for absolutely any type of uh, um, work that you do, you'll find a way to uh, to work with it. Now, I will show you pretty much what, uh, suppose I want to capture Duke. This is the default uh, site here for Duke. So let's say, oh, I want to create here, I want to highlight this area. All I have to do is highlight it, right click. You have the yellow highlighting. Let's say further down, there is something I want to say, oh, I want to put a note about this uh, law student. I click here approximately where I want to add a note, and I'll say, okay, uh, I want to resize it. Maybe I want to move it here. I type my note. I will say, okay. Don't worry. Those are from coming from the code from the page. So that note is staying there. And if you use a player and you look at this file, you'll be able to change that note too. So uh, it's, and I tried it. So in fact, you do have a little bit of uh, um, right permission for, for the notes. Really nice about these notes, if you have um, a very long web page, you can use these notes as navigational tools. So you don't even need to type any text. All you have to do, you click Next, and automatically the program will move you to the next note. So if you have areas that you want to highlight and to get, it's like a bookmark for those of you that are familiar with web pages. So you click on next or previous and it's moving you in a very large file up and down to different areas. So you can use it as a navigation tool. Um, that's how you create a node. And once you have to create the notes and the highlighting, the yellow highlighting before you capture the page. You capture the page through the tray bin here, if you see, you have a push pin. For those of you that are in this area, maybe you don't see. It's a push pin uh, icon here in the tray. I just grab it and drop it on the page. Now, I, that's, I'm getting to the point to really uh, bring this page into the database. Let's say I will create a new folder. I will call it Duke. And I have options here. I can save it as HTML and graphics, HTML only, bookmark. I can include the scripts. And usually, when you have fancy things, uh, you don't want to this uh, to check. And I always, I have this always browse for folder, so it gives me the ability to place it in the right place where I want, or to create a new folder. And I can also put an alert icon. I never use this feature, but maybe if you have something to really show that you, as a reminder or so, you put it there and it's going to come into the file to the left-hand side. So for a visual, I would say, maybe effects. So you say save. You can also definitely, you can name it in a different way. 
I'll uh, use a default, the name of the page, and I'll save it. Now, let, let's try again. I think I forgot to mention several, some things. Uh, on uh, the right side, if you see here in all these buttons, you have an option here to add a note. This is an area that you can add any type of free text that you want for this as a reminder, keeping in mind that this is indexed, so you can search it using the search feature of the database. Absolutely every word in uh, what you put in the notes, including besides the HTML and whatever you have on the page, it's indexed automatically by this uh, application. So you can create this note. This is not the only place that you have this note. You can also right-click at any type on the file, And I will say just this, apply, okay. And I'll say, uh, I'll cancel this because we already saved the file. Now, I'm recalling the uh, catch the web. And where is our Duke? Here. If I right click on the file, I get into the properties and at this time, too, I can add a note to any file that you have. So you have more than one way to get there. Now, one feature that I really like very much is the fact that when you display your database in Internet Explorer here, if I click on the folder, I have all these files here. I have details. And it's showing when you grabbed it. And it's also showing the URL, so you can click, and it's all hot text. And what is even nicer, if you click, yes, second. When you click on any of the files, it's showing you the title. You can go to the document. It's showing you the URL. What is nice is for archival purposes. Uh, this, I never mentioned this uh, here, and uh, suppose for any reason you want to archive files, this is one fantastic way to do it. You grab and you have a picture of that web page at the time that you capture, you can keep it forever. Uh, the only thing that I would like to see improved in this product would be to, uh, to have a URL checker that will tell you when these URLs have changed. But I'm using power marks for that feature, and I love the two combined. Now, so we captured a page. We did, uh, uh, I showed you how to create a note, uh, what you can do with that, all those features in the saving. A little bit of uh, database maintenance. Uh, you can drag, drop, right click on any file. You can move them as if you are in Windows. Let's say I want to put this Fulbright into personal. I just drag it, drag and drop. I want to really, you can right click on any folder, you can present, this will bring your player into action, you can export, and this is how you create the files, archival files in the proprietary format of this application. And the nicest ones that they just added this year is the publish. And suppose I want to send to any of you uh, a copy of just this folder. I can send everything. I can put the whole database or anything at file level, folder level. It doesn't matter. So, and if you look here, it's a web arch archive format, MHT format. That is the same format that it's used by Internet Explorer. So I can say, let's save this on, let's put it on the desktop. And I can call it the same way. Get away, save. So this is a way to create a uh, file format that anybody that is using uh, the Windows and Internet Explorer 5 or above will be able to see it and use it. And I can preview it. If I want to use email, I click for the email, and so it's going to bring automatically up your email uh, client that you have on your uh, workstation. and. This morning I discovered it's only Outlook as I was reading, and I said I didn't know why somebody that I sent the file was not able to read it. 
If you look, if you use right now Outlook Express, you don't need to compress a file. If you use any uh, the other person that is receiving the file, if they use Outlook Express, you don't have to use this compressing uh, utility. That it's built in Windows and it's the Windows built-in compressing uh, algorithm. If the person that you send the file to, uh, to it's using Outlook or any of the other clients, you have to, to compress the file. So, uh, and the compressing, as I said, if you are in the Windows environment, automatically Windows will uncompress it. It's not one of the proprietary formats. It's the Windows compressing format. So that's how you do it, and you can uh, compress it. And now I'm getting to the client here on this machine, and I don't know if it's going to work for me. I think it's going to ask for a password to get to the network here and to be able to use the email as it's configured. So uh, I would rather say forget about this feature. On your workstation, you'll be able to do this. Right now, it's asking me if, uh, to get through uh, the network here at Duke. I will just cancel all this. Okay, I'll, and I'll cancel that too. Now, let's see if I missed any of this. I got caught with... Uh, Oh, another wonderful, at some point, I did publish this in a publication uh, that it's in the library field for uh, the computer SIS uh, group. And they asked me for captured of the pictures for this presentation, for the product, for cash. They wanted to have window. And I said, how can I do it? And I, I tried to use a Windows environment. And after that, I looked back into the help file. And I discovered that Catch the Web has a really nice feature. And let's go to the Duke page here. So suppose I want to capture this page, but I want to capture it as a picture. You can use the shift key as you drag the push pin. And look what you have here. You have, you can save as a frame, you can save the entire page as an image, and you can save a selection. So when you click on the save a selection, it creates, it lets you mouse over I'm not an expert of this feature because I haven't used it yet, but I just read about it. So right now I think, yeah, so whatever I highlighted there, let's see if it's working. Let's see capture. And I'll put it here on the same page. And let's see what it captured now, maybe. So it captured only that section. It worked. Good. So if, if you want to do pictures or any of this, and that's what I used to do it. It's, it's still a product that is new, and it's a lot of room for enhancements that I would like to see. I love it. I bookmark everything. Not bookmark. I capture everything with that. And I haven't shown you my personal folder. This is where I keep everything that is of interest for me, even products that I want to buy. I, I get there, and I just link, and... <laughs> I find it when I'm interested in a product that I really I'm after. Good. So I showed you the, the uh, special capture tool, how to manage the database. And in fact, I never showed you the application itself, the solo. So the solo application, in fact, it's a mini browser. You can use it and have the same functionality like Internet Explorer to display pages, move back and forth, capture. Once you, reca once you capture a, a page, a web uh, page in this product, you can recapture it again. So if you forgot to add some highlights or some of the others, you do it again, you, you do the highlighting, you do the notes, and you recapture. What is really, uh, what I don't like about the second recapturing, you lose the first bookmark of the notes, so it points to the file as it was in your database. So, but just go back. If you want to redo it, go to the same website and do the same process. If the URL, the original URL of the file is not important for you, just recapture the file as is in your database and do the modifications as needed. Um, now, when you do, suppose you want to do a, a Kiosk presentation, you will be able to run. Let's do a small folder. I will do this application. Okay, so well. I will, I'm going to say present. Again, present will bring up the player. We are in the player mode. 
and if you see on the left hand side you have all the pages all the files in alphabetical order correct now if you right click on the folder suppose you really want to present whatever you have to present in a different order that is not alphabetical I think you just do right click and you say I think I did, didn't document myself enough on this feature. Let me go back and I'll show you some other features. I just right click on the pin, push pin in uh, the tray and all I want, I, I have several options. Uh, open, search, paste from clipboard. I really want to open the solo. This is a solo, the, the application itself. Uh, let me see if okay, this is the option. So in order to reorder, yes. In order, in order to use that feature that, uh, uh, see, I haven't thought enough because the player, you don't have too much capability to, to write on the files themselves. So you have to be in the solo. And here you have, as you see here, present, export, publish, delete, rename, and sequence. So this, do you see a little bit of a round with text there? Right now, I can go in this folder and Place, see, just drag and drop. So if I want to start with these files, press or so, I drag it where I want to be, and that's the order that you'll be saving the file or playing. So really, you have control how the files will display when you run a cache presentation. Michael, so when you email that to someone or uh, archive it or whatever, it will keep. It will keep the sequence safe, so you have control about how it's going, and they will not be able to change that. In fact, yes, there is a big difference. And right now you are looking at all my database. It's, it's keeping uh, uh, everything that is in that web page, the scripting, all the special elements, the coding. So it's just saving everything. When you save in the MHT format, that is the proprietary for Internet Explorer, the files are bigger than the files created by this database. But they are universal. You can use them, everybody can look at those files and they don't need the player, they don't need this application, and that's the beauty of it. Uh, I would suggest use a compressing uh, utility, compress the files and send them before, uh, I mean, if you use email or so. Also, the files are automatically compressed by the solo when you send it and you save it. You have that. I never looked at the compression uh, uh, percentage. I really didn't care much at that point because it's just I'm using it internally. Our uh, server supports large files and uh, I never sent the whole database. And I would say if you really want to help people with the database, find a different way. Put it on a floppy or put it on a flash uh, a memory, put it on a CD, burn a CD. There are so many ways to, or put them on a website and they just can download or on an FTP site. So that will be easy. So well, I did show, so that's a way to uh, prearrange the files the, in the orders that is predetermined by you to, for people, for cache mode. Okay. Oh. oh, yes, you can do absolutely everything. You can clean and copy. Let's do. I can right click right and see. I don't even have to be in the solo. I'm going to close the solo. I'm going to be in Internet Explorer. This is a player. Now, I'm here in Internet Explorer, correct? I just right click here. I say new folder, test. And all I can do, I can right click on any file. I just can copy. It's it, it's so simple. I don't even have to go over. You have the same abilities that you have in the Windows environment. Cut, paste, copy, delete, right click. You, it's just exactly like a, a, a mini uh, uh, explorer. Explorer when I mean Windows environment explorer. And I was uh, talking to you about the fact that you can use the uh, solo application as a mini browser. I will just bring it back. 
And if you see here, you have back, forward, Oh, so it's moving through the um, files, so you can mimic, once you move that, you can move as you moved in the presentation. And also, let's see, you can again, if you want to do notes in already captured, you do it here. Okay, so you can do it, you can create a note, or you can add a highlight. I love this highlighted feature. When you have a long document and you want to share, you just look at what is important. You highlight, you send it in MHT, everybody can look at it. If they really want to learn more, they can click, get more information from the website uh, as you preserve this. And again, remember, you can save these uh, pages only as bookmarks. So you can create a large collection of bookmarks without capturing the website if you really need the bookmarks in an environment where you have full internet connection. So it's pretty much like uh, uh, power marks, uh, but it's not as, as good in terms of updating itself. Let's see. Um, do you want to see the search feature? It's uh, for those of you that are librarians here, you have the uh, the full capabilities of a now let's see I'm not sure I understand. So to to use a, a I see. I never thought of this, but that would be great to to ask. Uh, is Leslie? Wow, Leslie. Leslie is here. She is uh, uh, working with Catch the Web, and Leslie presented this product last year at the ALL, and that's how I got in love with this product and. Uh, I would say she can answer this question. I didn't know if, uh, she was here. You can, uh, in the yellow question mark, at the rich text format document, you can cut and paste, you can add a www.anotherurl.com. So we can do it right now, correct? Yes. I didn't even know about this. <laughs> this, this is even better than uh, I thought, this product. So let's try. Now I will see if I can really do anything with this. Let's do, uh, what is this? Suppose I want to add here a note. It's a mail one? Okay, it's not going to work in a regular mail. Let's work on the Duke page. So what you say is that we can really... Uh, add a note, and I'll say here HTTP, correct? Apple. <laughs> okay. Let's see. Should we capture it, correct? Let's put it here, link. Okay, let's go into the Duke. Wow. <laughs> That's nice. I didn't even know about this. And you know what? I would like to inc include in the description. Of Is this documented in the help? Probably not as well as it should be. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I can send you a reminder about this and some other things because I, I really think it's great. And she's not paying me for this. In fact, she gave me free. <laughs> uh, but... It's, I love this product, and I, I would say maybe there are some others out there. Uh, it's up to you to investigate and to find out. The idea is what an Internet agent can do and how you can use it for your uh, educational uh, purposes. And I think it's great uh, up to the point that the Internet will be more reliable for our institutions and for our connections. I would say this is a wonderful replacement of an active 
uh, line for you to carry around and not worry about uh, connectivity, about speed. It's all you can rely. You rely on your hardware the way you know it. Or even easier, if you go, as I said, at any place, you burn it, you put it on a flash memory, you take it with you, the file, all you require, you say, I want to do a presentation, all I need, it's a computer with a, a expansion or a drive or a USB so I can uh, upload my files and I can present it. So really, I have a USB flash drive and I keep it on my keychain. You can take right now, if you look at this uh, USB devices, uh, a gig, two gigs, Toshiba or so, you put the Library of Congress with you and you take it and really you, you present it. It's true and I would say as these devices uh, increase in... Uh, uh, size and I think IBM is uh, working on a millipad technology that will increase 3,000 times the magneto optical devices. So what is right now 188 megabytes multiplied by 3,000 and you get the terabytes where I don't even know what's the next increase for terabytes. You really, you can get the whole web with you in a, on a keychain. So I don't, I don't says that this will replace the internet, but it's a nice way to carry with you material and information. Is there any way that, is there any feature that will like, automatically um, allow an update the URL and bring in the most current page? Like, will it automatically That's what I suggested for the company will be, and this is including in the other tools that I mentioned here, PowerMarks. You go and automatically it updates, and uh, it's, uh, I, I'm sorry to say here with a representative from uh, Catch the Web, I love that product too, because the two together, are wonderful, wonderful. If you're using this to make a class presentation, can you add pages of text, or do you use the notes over the page as a tool? You know what I mean, what I'm trying to say? Add notes, so your personal uh, notes, you yes. You presentation on web research. And you okay. What I would say, if you really know those notes are extensive, Put them in HTML, save it in any words uh, for. Uh, you save them, you display in a browser, you, ca you capture those uh, notes, and voila, I mean, you are in business. If, but if it's very, or use a notes area. And I have no idea if how big those notes can be, but I mean, it defeats the purpose. If the note is big enough, will take more room than the page that you display, why do you want to put a note there? So, uh, also, I did forget to tell you about the players that will also help you do a batch printing of all the files that you captured. That's a nice feature if you have a large, you know, right now you go to a site, you really have to tell what you want to print. With that one, you can do uh, a batch, and uh, uh, I will show you the search engine that is really, if librarians are here, it's exactly the Boolean advanced and the minor, so I don't think I have to spend too much time showing you how a Boolean search will work. It's available in this product, and uh, uh, it's great. And plus, it indexes, as I said, the notes, so you have to special things that you want to look for, and when you have a large database like what I have right now here and I'm uh, adding, constantly adding, you, it's easy for you to, uh, to search for items that you know exist in uh, the database. And Leslie? In, you, you need uh, the solo. Okay, as I said, the solo, you recall from the push pin or, or from the start? Okay, and let me put it uh, plainly. Sometimes the software is not acting exactly the way you want it. What I would suggest is just close the application and reopen it, if, if you have any errors or so. And if you see here, oh, what did I add? I added test, I think, in one of the files. Let's see if I can get it. Search documents, search notes, search directory names. I will have them all checked, and let's see how fast it will do. Was it in this, maybe this page? Uh, okay. Was it uh, maybe a test? Let's see, search only the notes. We, we did get a wow here, but I didn't uh, use it extensively, the search. Right now I'm basing the pretty much I'm going through the organization and the structures that I have given to the database. And uh, 
I, I'm saying every day I'm using it, I'm capturing things, and in fact I'm just uh, lagging behind now reading all the information that uh, I would like to. But Oh, yes, it captures all the screens, so, and that's why you have the notes there. So you can move inside if you want to use the notes as a navigation tool. And uh, so the, the question was if you capture the whole site, the whole web page, if it's longer than the screen uh, can display. And uh, the answer is yes, absolutely everything that is on that page. Pictures, uh, did you see that uh, all those rollovers and all those uh, dynamic effects, they stay with the page, as you, if you capture the page uh, full, when you save it? Michael, is the, uh, is the documentation uh, stronger than the documentation on my VCR? I mean, you know what? I mean, it, strikes I, I, that, it strikes me that you, you've, uh, you've uh, always demonstrated how to play the polonaise. And I'd just like to know how long did it take you to get to this? Um, the old, in fact, I wanted, and my plan was for this presentation. I am never very, uh, what you call, step by step for any presentations that I do to rehearse or know it by heart. Uh, I have about, I did a number, I have about eight pages, and that's, or nine, of the help file. And you don't even need anything else. If you want to read just the help file here, you have documented wonderfully uh, all the features. And it's going to take you maybe 10 or 15 minutes. But if you've seen here, it's so very easy to use. It's all Windows. If you are using Windows or so, you'll have no problem. You'll be working on, in business in five minutes with this database. And as I said, I just like it very much. And I would say you have, uh, if you have, uh, a little, you don't need too much imagination to really use it for your settings. So th there are so many things that you can do with this. And I am really thinking of uh, the cache modules that you can uh, create with basic information. You don't need a, a very powerful uh, computer to do this. It's just to meet the, the bare minimums to run uh, uh, the player, and uh, that's about it. An old machine will, will be, be put to good use in any place. And I'm always thinking of libraries because I'm working in a library. But there are, uh, for those of you that teach a lot, uh, and if you use internet, uh, I'm talking maybe uh, legal resources, there are some wonderful uh, uh, free legal websites that you can capture. As you see, you can capture databases. There is no tool that I know right now that you can capture those uh, dynamic uh, web pages that are coming from databases. And I will exemplify with something that is very, uh, very nice. I am doing, uh, for a few months, I've been doing government documents uh, dropping of items as they move more and more into an uh, electronic environment. And I have that, for those of you that are familiar with this, uh, they, the GPO has, uh, GPO has a web page where you can do add and drop items. And I was at the reference desk one night and I said, oh, I have half an hour, let me drop about 50 or 100 items quick. So I did it and guess what? At the end when I was about to submit the page, the server was down. Uh, and I was, I'm very slow in typing because I still type in looking at the keyboard. And I hope they will add a feature to do what you call a voice recognition. That would be wonderful. <laughs> but uh, I typed it and I didn't, uh, I, I was not able to submit it and I lost all that half hour of typing. And the next day I thought, how can I go about this? And I will show you. I have, I have a page and uh, when I left, I gave it to my, uh, um, to the people that uh, do this in uh, my absence, and let's see if, I, if it's here. Yes, I grabbed this page. Let me show you big. This is a, a, a GPO site where you do add and drop, and guess what? This is an MHT, I saved it on my desktop. I go and do all my typing on the workstation where I have uh, uh, and right now you can do this anywhere as long as you have this file. You save it in a place, wherever you want. You go to it. I'm exemplifying with something that I'm really doing, but you can do this with any other thing where you need to do input over the web. So I do all my typing here, and when I am done, I am just, I put the password, and I click the submit. And what it does, this is a capture web page. 
it keeps all the uh, scripting or so. I click submit, it's live, it goes there. So I'm not gonna use ever that reference desk workstation. <laughs> I'm gonna use, <laughs> I'm gonna use this and it stays there. And I gave it to my colleagues and I said, uh, please use this password. I, I, I gave a printout and after that I sent through email to them and I said, place it in a convenient place when you have to do dropping or adding because this is the time that we do of the year. Just enter the, pa enter the password after you are done inputting because it deactivates after a few minutes and just hit the submit button. So, in fact, if you have instructions like this, you can give to your uh, colleagues if there is a, 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 a task that you have students or somebody else assigned to and if it's a web processing, create a, a page like this one, give them uh, and say just click the submit and it keeps because it keeps as if you are on that website. So it's the same functionality behind it as it is on a regular uh, website. So I, I don't know, uh, Leslie, did I miss anything, uh, any big picture? Because I did not follow this. Okay. All I want to tell you is that I love it. <laughs> and she did not pay me, but I got it free. And I hope... <laughs> I hope it, uh, it will work for you if you will uh, ever consider an internet agent. And they are kind of powerful. And it's anonymous for any 30 days Yes. Please, I will urge you. And in fact, I talked to our IT director and I said, I would say, in my opinion, every librarian should have a tool like this one on PowerWeb. Right now, if you use uh, that uh, PowerMarks, uh, and you bookmark and you do all this stuff, you create web pages on the fly. In two seconds you create and you can, oh, you can do so many things for uh, your areas. And you just need a little bit of imagination. This is one other area that I uh, suggested to catch the web. You cannot capture video files with this. No stream. But I don't see a need to, to capture uh, video in uh, this tool. I would say mostly for uh, static uh, presentations, for things that are, are of uh, static nature, do it. I would say if you want to do video capturing, there are some other tools, so just use a video and any Windows environment will do wonderful things with your video. You don't have to buy anything in uh, Windows right now to use any format and to create movies and whatever you want. Are there any? The enterprise version is a web-based. It's more for uh, collaboration and uh, networking among people that share files. Uh, I have I have not looked into it. It looks like it's a little bit more. It's slicker in look and in feel. I looked at the help file for the enterprise and uh, what I would say, in a sense, it beats my, uh, what you call the purpose of this application for me because what I really like on this application is not being connected to the web, okay, and make presentations. Why do I have, but I'm not making a point against the net. That's for people to share and to collaborate, so you use that one, and before you go and do your presentation class or uh, far away presentations, you download them somewhere. Uh, Leslie is here from the company, and she will tell you more. The website is catchtheweb.com, and you can get more information, and also look uh, into search engines and look at some other uh, internet agents. And uh, I'm also suggesting look at the power marks uh, between the two, you have wonderful uh, tools to really grab content, grab URL, and create uh, customized uh, uh, lessons of presentations. Thank you.